Diamonds Inc., Serene Stamper, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Nova Scotia, Canada with a super cool video. I can't wait to show this project to you. Um, the technique that I'm using is incredibly popular right now. It is called the Floating Image Technique and it was, I believe, recently released on Jennifer McGuire's YouTube channel so um, she's always got great ideas and I think everyone has just been wowed by it because like I said I'm seeing it all over the internet and for good reason it is incredibly addictive once you try it you don't want to stop making projects and cards using this technique it's it's one of the most fun techniques that I've come across in a long long time so today's project is a non-card project and I'm going to show you what I'm going to demonstrate in the video. So this is a floating image frame so it might be hard to see on the video but all these floating images are raised. It, it looks like they're literally floating in the frame and, um, and I had wanted to write the word create on the inside but uh, there wasn't enough space in the opening for that many letters. And I just thought, you know what, it's for my own craft room. It's not very often I make a project for myself, so I thought, why not put my name on it? So one of the things you're gonna hear me talk about in the video are all the different ways you can use this technique and all the different um, kinds of frames that you can make, which would be perfect for gifts. Mother's Day is coming up. It's not too early to, um, start making our Christmas gifts um, so it's just it's one of those projects you guys that once you get going with it your brain won't stop you just keep thinking oh my gosh I can do this and I can do that and that doesn't count the cards that you can make using this technique um, yeah so it's it's super cool I really had a lot of fun with this and um, I had leftover pieces from this frame and so I put together a second frame that's done a little bit differently but using the pieces that I trimmed from around this one. And so at the end of this video I added that um, clip of me creating the second um, frame but I speed it up so that you're not you know sitting in your chair for six hours watching me do this project um, and if I don't get on with it you will be so let's get stamping so I'm excited to share a non card project with you today and April 10th marks my 17 year anniversary with Stampin Up that's the night that they first arrived in Canada and I have loved every minute of it and so so I wanted to make a special little project just for myself that I can put up in my craft room and I am going to um, create this project using a frame. This is just a frame from the dollar store and the super popular floating image technique. I'm just going to prepare my um, frame by taking off the back and getting the inside bits out. Okay, so this little piece that was inside the frame measures five by seven. So I have gone ahead and I've cut this piece out. This is the backing that comes with our designer series paper. So I've cut this piece to measure five by seven. So that's going to be my mat. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I cut this piece to measure three and three quarters by five and a half. So I can tell it's going to fit on my mat really nicely. And this is the piece that I'm going to do all the decorating on. So on this piece of Whisper White, this measures six by eight and a half. Um, this was pre-cut from just a different project. But um, I'm using this to stamp my images and to color them and then to cut them out. Okay, so I've got that on my block and now I'm inking it up with my Black Stays On. And I'm just going to stamp this uh, randomly and I'm going to try to get a few of them on there and then I'm going to color them and cut them out with the coordinating die. So I'm going to speed this up while I stamp so that um, my video doesn't take too long to do. Okay, so I've stamped my sheet and um, I'm not quite sure how my design is going to go yet so I'm going to go ahead and stamp some more of these images and then I've got them if I decide to use them. Uh, 
Okay, so as you saw, I stamped the leaf with um, green. I used mossy meadow. So now I am just going to start coloring all my bits and pieces. I absolutely love using my aqua painter and it's quick to do. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Okay, now I'm going in with my So Saffron, and um, I should mention, by the way, you can see I'm squeezing the lid to get the ink to the um, top of the lid. This is our old style um, ink pads, and our new style, of course, um, it's a little bit more difficult when you squeeze to get that pool of ink. Um, so that's where the ink refills come in handy. All you have to do is just uh, squeeze a little bit out onto the lid, and you've got that or you can go ahead and open this up and just tap it onto a block and then just pick up your ink from the block. That works really well too. When I'm adding this color, I'm not uh, worrying about covering the entire flower because I know I'm gonna go back in there with that second color. Okay, now I'm going in with my powder pink and I'm just going to fill in um, the white gaps. Okay, so there are my pink and yellow roses. Now I'm going to move on to Calypso Coral. So this one went way darker. I didn't blot some of that off, so I'm going to have to make the rest of the rose equally dark. But I think it actually looks pretty, so I'm going to go with it. And you know what? I might just go ahead and do that with, with the other ones too. Cleaned off the tip of my aqua painter. I'm going back into that um, So Saffron because since that um, Calypso Coral was quite a bit darker, I want my yellow to be darker on these particular roses. There are my roses, and I know we got a couple, like I said, they're a bit darker than the rest, but I think that's going to be just fine. Now we're going to move on to these ones. I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo on these little guys. So just by adding the, uh, going back in with the ink, you get the two shades, which is very pretty. Now for these ones, I'm going to use the Lovely Lipstick. I like the Lovely Lipstick a lot. It's not, it's definitely not real red and it's definitely not Cherry Cobbler. It's got a bit more pink to it. Really like it. Okay, so I was able to squeeze a bit of ink on the lid, so just picking some of that up. And then going back in with a little bit more ink. So we have our pieces. I'm actually wondering now if I should add a little bit more pink. And I'm thinking so, just because these ones are so much darker, I think I'm just gonna add a little bit more. So now that I have all these pieces stamped and colored, it's time to cut them through the Big Shot. So for some reason, I thought we had dyes for these images and we don't. So that's okay. Um, I may cut them out and use them on this project. I may not. Haven't decided yet. 
Okay, so now I've got my large um, my large letters framelit dies. I wanted to cut out the word create, but um, they're pretty big and they're not going to fit in the frame. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do my name. What the heck? Why not? If I don't, who will? So um, nothing wrong with having something with your name in your room. That's what I say. And keep this in mind for... Um, for baby gifts and personalized gifts for friends. So I'm going to go ahead and run that through. These letters are an investment. Are they worth it? In my opinion, most certainly they are. I have used them a ton and they are fantastic. So I'm going to pop these out. And the negative image on here, I do believe I am going to save that because I can probably use that in my scrapbook or something. And I'm also going to save this little itty bit that's from the A because I will need that for my scrapbook page. Okay, so I'm just positioning the letters of my name in the center. And then I'm going to start filling it in with the flowers. And also, I did cut these little bits out, but I didn't cut the leaves out. Um, I didn't cut these ones out because I don't think we need them. There's a, there's a lot going on here. I think this is the fussiest bit. This is the bit I think takes the longest because you really want to get it just so. Okay, I think that's what I'm doing. So now it's time for the press and seal. Okay, so the press and seal has a bit of a tackiness to it, so that's why you need to use press and seal. Very carefully lay this on top. Uh, make sure nothing moved too much. And I can see that my T has moved. Uh, and a flower has moved. Sometimes when you see these tutorials online, they look easy peasy, and then you go to do them and you're like, what the heck? They made it look so easy. Well, I'm here to tell you, sometimes it's not as smooth as one would think. But we will get through it. Okay. That's what we're getting. Actually, I'm going to move this one out a bit. Okay. So that took a little bit of doing, I will be honest. Okay. So now you really want to push that down. You want everything to be sticking to that press and seal. So I'm giving it a good little rub. And there's like little dots, which would be the sticky bit on this press and seal. And you can actually see them kind of um, disappear when you rub them. So that's when you know you've really got that press and seal firmly on them. So rub over all of the die cuts. Really get that press and seal on them. Okay, so you can see everything's stuck and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim um, all around the edge. And all these little bits can be saved and used on other cards. So nothing has to go to waste. Okay, so there's my cutout piece. This little bit with all these odds and sods are going to be put aside. I'm going to do something with them later. 
and um, yeah, so that's pretty good. I'm going to now cut out the center portion of this with my Big Shot. And then I have my rectangular dies, so I'm just going to find one that fits nicely around my name. And I also want to make sure I get some of those flowers in there, but I don't want to I don't want to uh, cut the bird. See how it's going to cut the bird? I was kind of concerned about that. And I'm thinking worst case scenario, I'm just going to stamp and color another bird and I'll I'll just put it on top if I need to. So now I'm lifting up this piece. I'm going to peel it off of the Whisper White very carefully because I don't want any of my pieces left behind. Oops. Okay. Everything's on there. Perfectly. So now I'm going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals and put some Stampin' Dimensionals around the frame. Alright, so this is definitely a project where you are going to be using foam strips, Stampin' Dimensionals, things like that. You don't want to be shy. See, I've just zoomed in so you can see I have lots of foam bits and I'm going to peel off the backing and then I'm going to put it on this 5x7 which was cut from the cardboard that comes in our designer series paper. Whisper white cardstock would work as well. I just wanted something a little bit sturdier. Okay, so I've got all the backings off and oops, sticky sticky. I am just going to position this right on top okay cool so everything's pushed down so if any trimming needs to be done now's the time to do it and it's not too bad really so I'll just clean that up a little bit okay then we peel back the peel and stick. I'm just going to grab a corner with my scissors. Actually, no, where's my handy dandy tool? Here we go. This is the ticket. Yes. Love this tool. This is just the coolest technique. I can understand why it's so popular right now. And it's not tearing the paper or anything like that. So, so cool. So now it looks like all those images are floating, hence, hence the, uh, the name of the technique. So, now I need to figure out how I'm going to do this piece. Because this piece you would ordinarily put in a, um, on a separate card. But because I put my name on it, I want it in the center. I think what I'm going to do is the um, edges around here, I think I'm going to put adhesive so that they stick right to the... Um, right to the back except for the bird's head I'll put a little dimensional and then I'm gonna put dimensionals behind my name so um, yeah we will see how that turns out more dimensionals again I'm gonna cut some in half and I'm going to start putting them on the letters of my name 
Okay, and then I have another little piece, and that's going to be for the bird, the bird's head right down here. All right, next, adhesive. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my liquid glue and put it on the bits that I don't want raised up. So this is going to be tricky because I have to lift this up and put it on my um, card. So I am putting only a very little bit of glue onto each of these pieces. So yeah, I just have like the tiniest, tiniest little drops of glue and I don't even know how this is going to work. So I'm going to pick it up by the little sticker here in the corner. And try my best to center this. All the bits that I don't want raised, I'm pushing down. This tool is a godsend for this, um, I must say. Okay, guys. I think we're good. Make sure all those letters are pushed down. And because I have glue behind these little bits that are pushed down that aren't raised, I really just want to give that a second to dry. And I know some of my letters are a bit cro crooked, but it's, it's not something I'm going to worry about, especially when it was kind of tricky to make sure we got things as lined up as we could. When you're using just the flower die cuts, it's not so imperative that it's bang on straight. But when you're doing something like with letters, yeah, it's a little bit trickier. And this is the first time I've done it with the letters. Nothing like doing it, you know, while I'm filming it. <laughs> I think we can go ahead and start lifting up the um, press and seal now. This is so much fun. It may look tedious, it's not really. It's just being careful and taking your time. Um, it's so worth it. It's really super duper cool. Ta -da! I love it. I love it, love it. I really love it. I cannot wait to make some of these for gifts. So there you go. So we've got the top half raised and then we've got the bottom bit stuck down below and of course the name is raised as well so now it's time to put this in the frame all right let's see what it looks like isn't that pretty oh my gosh i am so tickled with that i love it and i hope you can see on the computer how cool it is seeing all these raised images um, you also get the shadows behind them because they're not stuck directly to paper. Yeah, it's super cool. And the little bird turned out. So there is my personalized frame. So I know you guys are going to have fun with this. Think about Christmas, the word Mary, um, and just, you know, joy. Bless this home. You can make as long, you know, as, depending on the length of the frame you get, like, the possibilities are endless. Or you can just use flowers, whatever you like. Or you can just do the frame like I did here and put a photo on the inside. So I can't wait to play around a bit more with this technique. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I had an absolute blast making this and it is it is truly the coolest um, seeing those images seemingly floating on their own inside the frame so give this a whirl you're gonna have so much fun